Welcome to my Solo God base design. To start off the tour, we have our detachable TCs with overlapping building privilege that connects to our gatehouse with depot boxes and peaks for inner and outer visibility. Coming inside the compound, we have plenty of room to move around, land minis, and place auto turrets. Inside our airlock, we have a couple lockers and additional depot storage, as well as a trap guarding the front door. Up on the second floor, we've got auto turret placements, as well as two large battery rooms and additional deployable placement locations. Going up to the third floor, we have our shooting floor with some wide angle peaks. And on our way to the roof, we have some quarter walls here where you could throw smokes and grenades through. On our roof here, we have the wind turbines as well as visibility inside your shooting floor and inside the compound without being seen from below. Going down into the core, we have another locker, some storage, six furnaces, and then your stereotypical two by one design with boxes in the floor. This is how I prefer to set up my 2x1 deployables so that I can install industrial more easily later on. So it's up to you if you would like to exchange this for a different layout. Also, this video has chapter timestamps in the description if you're looking for a specific part of the tutorial. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed the video. Only 9% of you are. Leave a like if this is a base that you would use or leave a comment down below telling me what you would change. All right, so here's the build cost and the upkeep for the 2x1 starter. If you're struggling to get that row of stone, you could start off with this one by one design. The only thing you would have to remember is the lower foundation should be upgraded so nobody can destroy the twig. We're going to put the TC on the right side over here and then slap your double door down. Boom, you got your starter. Surround the triangle and square here with half walls. Put your walls down, your door frame. You might need this triangle to jump up. And the location you're gonna wanna build this in for your final version of the base, your main base location, is gonna have to be a pretty big area, but it's not crazy large. And we'll go over later on in the video on how you can use your main TC for the shooting floor upkeep instead of externals, which will make the base way smaller. If you've only got one furnace, you're gonna wanna put it here. So if you open the doors quickly like that, you'll just be able to walk through. This foundation will be here forever if you wanted to upgrade it. Otherwise, we're just placing twig here so that we can place the triangle in the TC room down. This is a base design that most of you are probably familiar with, but I'm going over it in case there's any new players that need to see the little nuances that go into a starter base design like this. We'll be going over the deployables now the starter base is done. I would recommend not upgrading it to sheet metal until you can at least do phase two. Most of the time I'll wait until I have enough to go straight to phase three, which is including the shooting floor, external TCs and high external stone walls. But it's up to you, the area you live in. If you live in an area where you have the threat of being raided, I would try to keep it as a two by one. You know what I mean? Like if you're low key, you don't bring people to your base. You don't kill people right outside of your base. You can just leave it like this. If you're in a high pop area on the map, you might want to just upgrade it as soon as possible, piece by piece, whenever you can. Uh, so, I mean, really that's up to you and your play style, whether or not you build multiple of these around the map until you find your main base location, or if you just keep it as a two by one for most of the wipe until you can go straight to phase three. Me personally, I like to build a couple of these around the map near gas stations that have like a harbor nearby so I can get easy and quick blue cards. Also, if you're running out of box space, for some reason, you can finesse another large box in here with a barbecue and small box, as well as another small box above the barbecue that I forgot to show in the video. These are the materials to build directly into phase two the upkeep 
as well as the scrap. You'll at least need the garage door, so you'll also need a tier two. Garage door is gonna go down right next to your TC. You're gonna wanna get the TC square upgraded as quickly as possible. If you can do this straight to armored, then skip sheet metal, go straight to armored if you have enough for that. This triangle right here is where three more furnaces will go. And then we'll create our jump up right here. If you have a ladder hatch or you just prefer ladder hatches, you could remove that and put a furnace until you get one. If you don't want three more furnaces, just throw a triangle right here, you're good to go. But this is where most of your charcoal is going to come from later on, so I would recommend putting three more furnaces here, if, especially if you're on vanilla. We're also going to upgrade this as soon as we can. If you have enough HQM, upgrade that straight to armored, but you can still access it later on from the inside of the base if you don't have the HQM right now. We're going to make sure this triangle is lowered, put a single door frame here on the other side of our base, wall it off, and this is going to be our jump up to the second floor from the outside. I'm upgrading my double door frames straight to sheet metal just because that's something I like to do. I don't really know why. You can leave it as stone if you would like, but if it is on a square, you would want to upgrade it to sheet metal so it can't be seen from the outside. On these triangles, it doesn't really matter. This door right here without another door behind it doesn't really have an airlock. I don't really care for airlocks because I leave through my roof most of the time. So you're going to want to get a trap, a shotgun trap or a flame turret above that door as quickly as you can. We're going to be putting double doors here instead of garages. For one, we'll be able to create a little crossfire opening to where people will have to run through traps later on in the design. And also so that you don't forget to close it. It's kind of like a, you're forced to close these types of doors type of thing. At least in my mind, I leave my garage doors open. I close every other type of door. So that way I never get deeped on. Next, we're going to be adding the honeycomb. Keep in mind, if you have the metal fragments to upgrade this, the entire phase two will eventually be upgraded to sheet metal. So if that's something that you can do right away, or if you're still in your starter base and you're saving up for phase two, everything you see here will be sheet metal eventually, except for like the front door if you don't have an armored door. And then at this point, you could leave it like this if you don't have enough to keep going forward. Just keep in mind you are exposed on the roof while you're going down to your core. But if you're building as you're going, this is a spot that you can leave it off at. Up on the second floor, add walls to the entire exterior and sealing the entire thing off except for these honeycomb triangles. Those are going to be our jump ups to our third floor. Now, we are not putting doors in this center hallway because we're going to have auto turrets here. But if you wanted to have doors instead of auto turrets, go for it. Otherwise, this is just specifically for the wind turbine stability at the end of the build. So you, if you're trying to save on some materials, you can skip those three door frames if you got auto turrets or shotgun traps to put there for now. These two rooms is where you can put your extra deployables or if you have a large battery, get it set up right away. Most of the time you're not going to be doing your electricity until your entire base is done anyway, so you could use this for like research tables and stuff. And then we're just going to cap this off with a door up here, also creating our quarter wall peek down into our shooting floor. You're going to need these triangles here. They're very important for later on when we're doing our roof. Also, you could put a little fire here so that you can get better angles until you get our roof. You, you might want to upgrade these to sheet metal at some point. You don't have to do it right now, but it just makes it easier to jump up later. And then we're just going to close it off with some double doors if you're trying to save on some gears. If you got garage doors ready to go, throw them down. Keep in mind, I'm saving on sheet metal and gears by only putting the doors on the top. There is no door below them, so you could get deeped on if you don't have your auto turrets or shotgun traps set up below those doors. Now we're just going to be going over what to upgrade in the base, which is pretty much everything as soon as you can, starting from your airlock right here. You don't need to worry about putting these garage doors down until you can at least get those two triangles upgraded because there's really no point if they go through the wall, you know what I mean? 
Don't forget, if you can, upgrade these foundations outside. And then, I mean, this is like the bare minimum right here to upgrade for you to be pretty much equal raid cost all the way around. The only thing is our TC isn't upgraded to armored yet. So that would be the only thing that it's still missing. And then whenever you get around to it, start upgrading everything else. Don't forget, this is where you can place some of your extra deployables that you might need. If you do get that battery, upgrade this room to sheet metal right away. If you're placing auto turrets down, otherwise just leave it stone. And we will be putting windows on here later on. Back to upgrading as soon as you can. These floors that are on like the inside of the base, you could leave stone if you're trying to save on some metal. Also, this part of the base, depending on how many garage doors you have, is also able to be left stone. But if you do have garage doors in there, upgrade that. We're going to throw some lockers in each of these triangle jump ups. If you struggle with making these jump ups or you have ladder hatches there, you're probably just not going to be able to put those lockers there. I like to put my boxes like this underneath the jump ups and two more lockers on the other side. There's like a very specific way you have to do this if you're like trying to pass through it. It can't be flush to the wall. You kind of have to spin it to the left like a little bit so that you can jump through here. Otherwise, you see you'll have like kind of a struggle like that. I need to fix that locker. It's just kind of like tilted to the left a little like pulled towards you on the left a little bit. Throwing down some additional storage here. This is where I would throw like my prim kits or like some tools, charcoal type of thing is what I use these boxes for. I never really connect them up to an industrial system. So you could you could put anything here, but I got some box storage just in case you needed more. And then remember, if you don't have doors here, you need these traps below here. I'm not, I'm not saying put an auto turret down at this point if you don't have one. But at least get like a flame turret or a shotgun trap down here because uh, or another door if you don't have traps learned yet. You could face these outward, by the way, if you want to be like a crazy motherfucker and you think you're going to get raided from that side, you could have them facing outward. It's up to you. If you think I'm stupid for doing this, just put a door down. All right. I just don't use my roof until I got a trap down there. And the reason I like it is because if people do go deep on me or they start raiding me, they're going to be like, why the hell is there a turret? It's going to catch them off guard. That's the whole point of them. If you are able to make these jumps with the locker here, it also makes for a super nasty shotgun trap or flame turret above that door. These boxes by your front exit are going to be connected to our industrial system later. These are going to be like our buffer boxes or depot boxes. Uh, your gate depot boxes will be connected to this one. So they are kind of important to have those there. We'll be moving these deployables outside, and the tier one is just there if you need BPs. Phase two is now completed, and like I said earlier, if you're having issues making the jump ups with these lockers, you're just gonna have to fiddle around with them a little bit, pull it closer to you on that left side once you see it turn blue, or you're just gonna have to remove them, I guess, if you can't make that jump. These are the materials you will need to build directly into phase three. This also is including every single deployable that we will be placing down in the entire base. So we're gonna start off by setting up our external TCs, which also are attached to our shooting floor. You just build out three squares and then place the triangles like this with two squares on each of the end triangles. Throw another triangle down, remove that square, and you're good to go. You're going to want to upgrade these specific triangles right here so that nobody can come jackhammer them out. If you're not building an external TC, upgrade that triangle right there in front of us because you can just attach it to your base like this. Boom. Now your shooting floor is attached directly to your main TC. The reason you would do this is if you don't have enough room for the gate and external TC, but if you have enough room for the gate, we can connect that. So we're going to remove these because that's if you're not doing the gate. These gates that I use have these loot rooms in the floor, but you have to put a half wall here until you get the double door frame with a window next to it so that the stability holds it up. And then you can remove that half wall and put the quarter wall there allowing you to access your depot boxes without jumping up into this gatehouse. 
You could put windows here, but I like to have these triangles here because the gatehouses are pretty tall, so it allows you to see down further than you normally would be able to with a regular window. And then if you're not able to put that external TC down, like I said before, due to terrain or for some other reason, you can just put two floor frames right here like that, and it'll connect it to your main TC. But we're gonna remove these for now so I can show you how to do this external TC, which is pretty simple. We're just gonna build out four. And on the fourth one, we're going to raise it up. Since our gate is high, we have to raise this up to put the roof down to detach it. Build these two triangles out to the left like that. And these two half walls are going to wanna to be upgraded as soon as you can, but they could be stone for now if you don't have the materials to do this. And we're gonna honeycomb it off. I like to put a garage door here in case I need to expand later for a large battery room. And then I like to do these unlootable TCs with the frame right here and then a window in front of it. And you can still put a TC in there if you get raided or somebody destroys this by standing on a box. Really all I do is upgrade around the TC to sheet metal. If you're upgrading it to armored, the rest of it would be sheet metal as well. And then I upgrade these so nobody can come jackhammer them out and destroy my shooting floor. I like to put a staircase here and we'll throw some shotgun traps down under there later as well. And then to connect it up, we need to put a frame right here to support it and build all the way across. That one right there is the stability part that's going to a break once we put a roof down over here so once you got that connected up destroy that twig and then you place a roof here to disconnect it if you ever get raided and you need to put down a TC in either your external or your main base back to our shooting floor we're going to build half walls down here I'm upgrading them to sheet metal because we're going to be putting auto turrets here later and if people are shooting rockets at an auto turret you don't want your whole shooting floor to crumble down the rest of the shooting floor will be stone. So that is done. We're just gonna duplicate this on the other side. At this point, you could put down your high external walls if you're getting bugged by your neighbors and you wanna keep them out while you're fiddling around with your shooting floor. Also, don't forget to put windows on your external TCs and we're gonna be throwing drop boxes down in here and you're gonna to wanna to place them a little further back so that we can put those adapters on it and connect it to our industrial system. Also, this is a great spot to throw some shotgun traps down into. So we're going to be putting our adapters on here to connect it to our industrial system. And then we're gonna throw three shotgun traps down. This middle one is the most important one, but people can dodge it. So we're gonna throw a couple down just in case for when they peek it, they die instantly instead of taking one shot. But if you don't have the rope or gears for this yet, it's something you can do later on. I'm just showcasing it right now. Back to the roof, get these garage doors down if you haven't yet. Now you're gonna grab these triangle floors and place them on the frames. And then these squares are going to go on your base, and that's what creates these gaps in the floor. Then we're going to be adding window frames all the way around. The same thing goes for the ceiling. The triangles are going to go on the outside and then the squares are going to connect on the inside to your base. If you build these two right here, it'll create the stability for those three triangles. And then we'll throw down the squares, which connect to that triangle floor frame, which I was talking about earlier, that was very important for our ceiling and roof tiles. This right here is where you can create a locker room with a bed. We'll be putting the deployables in there later. And then I like to put single door frames all the way around as when you close them, it creates a little locked off area because we're going to be putting regular windows inside of here. 
I'll leave them open most of the time, just so I can run around quite easily throughout the shooting floor. But as you'll see here, if we close all of these doors and somebody breaches one of the sides, you can just close it off and then you're good with that window protecting you from being shot. This is especially nice when taking helis because you can just come in here, close the door and then met up and you're good to go. I place the embrasures on the inside because it gives you a little bit more angles to peek from. Up here, we're going to create our little door, which has variations. If you wanted to put shops up here, if you wanted to put windows here instead of walls. I don't know why you would want the windows, maybe so you can see if somebody lands on your roof. But what I like to do is put these vending machines down just so slightly outwards so that it doesn't really affect you when you're jumping up. And I mean, if you have auto turrets up here, they're pretty safe. Otherwise, you probably would want your first armored doors to go up here so you can upgrade it to sheet metal. So nobody flies up here and steals your stuff for just two C4. I don't really know who's going to be coming up here and stealing that regardless. But this is where two auto turrets will go eventually anyway, so nobody can fly onto your roof. We'll put these roof tiles down like this. You're going to want this one on the corner to be on the outside just for stability reasons sometimes i found it just disappears for no reason so it's got to be on the outside and then these middle ones you can put these triangle roofs down which create kind of a little nice peek down for you to see inside of your compound and we are technically done with the base this is the finished design. The only thing we have left to do is compound it in and place all the deployables down like our wind turbines. You build up six walls high and then that's as high as the stability really lets you go. But depending on where you're built, it should be at least 110 power coming through here at all times. If you're built pretty low, I don't know, it might be a little less than that and you might need some solar panels. On top of our gatehouses, we're going to put these two triangles out so we can finesse these barricades up here. You're going to want to line up the right side with that line right there and then tilt it to the left a little bit. And this creates a pretty covered area so that nobody can just walk through there. And then after this, we will be throwing down our high external walls. If you place them just like so, I don't really know how to describe it. You can fit five on each side instead of six. So, I mean, if you just look at the angle I'm putting it down, maybe you can calculate the parabola, the trajectory or something. I don't really know. On these second walls, I kind of line it up straight and then pull it in about, it looks like about 30 degrees I pull it in. So I put it straight. And then I'm pulling it in about 30 degrees and you'll see we'll be able to just fit it very nicely. If you hold shift, you could put that down a lot more straighter than I just did. And then you just do that on the other side to get a nice little perfect circle going on right here for your walls. Don't forget to put down the barricades on the other gate. And you are now compounded. If you don't want people building up with twig, I'm going to show you every location to put these blinker lights and this will block people from building twig to get into your base or to get outside of your base. Remember, these two are gonna break whenever you open your TC, so you're gonna have to replace those blinker lights right there. And I've got symmetry turned on right now on the server so that it's doing this on the other side of the base too. So I'm only gonna be showing you half of it and then you just do the same on the other half of the base to prevent all twig frames from being built. A thing that you could do that I like is putting a square out right here, right? And then you put a triangle right here and now you can jump off of your roof and get outside of your base extremely quickly. I found myself in a lot of situations where I kill somebody from my roof, I take heli or you know what I mean? I'm trying to meet up with somebody quick and I spawn in my locker room on the second floor and then I gotta go through all of my doors out of the front door, out of the gate. And it takes a long time, so since my locker room is up on the shooting floor, that's just a quick and easy way that I can hop up out a single door and then jump off my roof and get out of the gate super quickly. And then here's the rest of the blinker lights for uh, preventing twig. 
basically just gonna put them all around the third and second floor don't really need them on the half walls below here and that's going to cover everything that's important for blocking the twig and you're probably like oh well how, people are just gonna jump out of the base well yeah you gotta put some sort of trap here so that nobody can just jump out of your base if you're gonna be doing that a good way to get charcoal is with these low grade refineries so i like to put two of them on the outside and i'll shove it up against my wall right here so it can be protected by my auto turrets just in case and i like to put two of these down also as a solo you need lots of low grade and then we're going to be going over some auto turret placements on the external tcs these are some of the first auto turrets i'll put down besides the ones on my roof it usually goes to these external TCs and then two auto turrets on my roof and then however many extra I can fit depending on my electrical setup I will place and then like I said earlier I'm throwing some shotgun traps down under here since you can't really see like furthest to the left and right of the gate also here's some two pretty nasty shotguns you can put on the outside of your externals if you're in a forest these kill people all the time I love putting shotgun traps on the outside of the base these deployables are also going to come out here And then my repair bench I like to put next to my door with some boxes. That way when I'm running out I can just repair my gun and I'll leave like a little tiny bit of materials out here that are used for like repairing my guns and stuff. And then on the outside of the honeycomb triangles is where we're going to put down two more auto turrets. You're going to want to upgrade these to sheet metal. And behind them is where you can put some mixing tables. We're going to be putting two more mixing tables on the other side. And these auto turrets right here are very important because this side of the base will not be covered by our other auto turret placements that are going to go higher up than them. So we're just going to duplicate that on the other side and throw two more mixing tables down over here for making GP. And if you need some animal fat changed into low grade, throw it over there. Let it run for a little bit. Now you should have your tier three by now. So we're going to move our tier two upstairs since those deployables up there are now outside. And then this box up here is where we're going to put the stuff for our large battery windows. A little bit of metal frags and a hammer are going to go in there to repair the windows whenever we need to take it off to turn off the auto turrets. Outside of one of the large battery rooms, we're going to put three electrical furnaces. And if you really squeeze and finesse it in here, you can twist it around really super close so that it's still behind the door and you'll still be able to put those adapters on there. We got a couple more auto turrets that you can place out here and these will basically prevent people from flying into your base or laddering over your walls. Now you can fit two here, but depending on your electrical system, you might not have enough power for all of these. So I'm just showing you that this is where two of them would go. But you can remove the one that's above those two down there and you'll still pretty much be fully covered all the way around it's just people might be able to jump in and then hide from those ones down there if they're quick with it which is why we got those shotgun traps below our gates so if you do decide you want more auto turrets or like sam sites or something your external tcs are great places to build up and throw two more wind turbines down and you got a bunch of room on your roof that you can put some solar panels so up here, you're going to put your little locker room with your bed. And later on, we'll be making two flank bases if you have enough room in the place you've built. So you'll be able to have three respawn points at your main base. This is going to be one of them where you'll throw smoke grenades, building materials and three kits in the locker. All that's left to do from here is get those armored doors down and set up those flank bases I was talking about. One of the hardest parts about being a solo player is dying when you get online raided. After we get these doors armored up, I'll show you how I create my flank bases, which also can be turned into a garage, I guess, if you like cars. These two doors right here are probably the least important to put armored doors down, but if you do get double doors, throw them down. And you can upgrade these right here if you really squeeze in there. But if you're having trouble upgrading it, you can go into the F1 console and type look and then go to the thing that pops up right here and do 0.1. And then when you're setting that back to normal, it's going to be 0.2. And that'll allow you to have a smaller look radius to upgrade these little half walls down there. 
same thing goes for when you're armoring all of this. You can also use the look radius, which will help you out. You're going to have to pick up some boxes and stuff like to get this foundation and the wall by TC if you haven't upgraded it yet, which is why I mentioned it earlier that you should upgrade this as soon as you can because you're going to have to pick up some stuff like if you got a bare rug, it's going to be in the way. These boxes down here are going to be in the way for this wall over here. So you're going to have to pick up one or two of them. That foundation down there is okay to leave a sheet because it's really close to the floor. And yeah, now your base is fully armored. You're chilling, you're vibing out. And I mean, if you've gotten to this point, congratulations. We're gonna be setting up electricity now. You might need to put these door frames right there because I don't know if it's just the build server I'm on, but this wind turbine kept falling out. And I like to put my root combiners on the frames that build up to the turbine and then connect those directly into my large battery. If you don't have the rest of the electrical stuff learned, it's good to get this part set up as quickly as possible so that your battery charges. And if you do have somebody destroy the stuff at the top, your large batteries will be charged and ready to power your auto turrets for a very long time until you get back online and fix it. So now we're gonna come in here and set up the electrical. On one of the large batteries, you'll be able to fit nine auto turrets. Also, remember, you're going to want this to be above 100 power coming in. If it's not, you might need to set up one or two solar panels on the roof and just plug it into the wind turbine root combiner. You'll have two extra power, so I like to just throw that into these industrial light DLCs because those only require one power each instead of two, like the regular light in the game, so you can get two lights down. And then the other 98 power will go to the auto turrets and switches to turn them off. So we'll have the power going to that new branch over there, which will go into this switch. And then the switch is going to go into this branch. We're going to set the left side of the branch to 31. And connect it to the splitters here. And then the switch is going to go into the left side of this branch. We're going to set it to 64. And now this is ready to go for six auto turrets over here. You'll see each of these splitters have 31 power coming in, meaning each auto turret gets 10 power, which is exactly what we need. Wire up your auto turrets. You'll be able to turn them off from here if you ever need to reload them. Now we still have enough power for three more auto turrets on this large battery, so we're going to get that set up. And basically, we're just going to put another branch down with a switch and a splitter. At this point, if you wanted to use the power for something else, I don't know, like a boom box or more lights, you could just have six auto turrets on here instead. And boom, now we have used all 100 power coming out of this large battery. So now we're going to be switching over to the other battery, which is going to be powering our electrical furnaces as well as some more auto turrets. So we're just going to be setting up a splitter here, plugging it into the power node on each of these electrical furnaces. And then you'll be grabbing a splitter, two conveyors and a combiner. You can place them wherever you would like. I'm just doing it really quickly for the sake of the video. The combiner is going to be the output of each electrical furnace, which will connect into the industrial out of each furnace. And then the splitter is going to go on the industrial in, which is going to put our materials from our drop boxes into the furnaces automatically for us. So this is a fully automated circuit here. Connect this to the output of one of the conveyors and the combiner to the input of one of the conveyors. Come down into your TC room, select one of your boxes you'd like your resources to go in, and then connect the input of this box through your doorways up to your conveyor that's attached to the combiner. And now to power this, we're just going to connect the electrical pass through to the power input on these conveyors. Take the left side of this branch and put it to the splitter for our furnaces and set it to 10. And then we're going to take the right side of the branch and put it on the power input of our first conveyor. Grab another branch, connect it to the output of our battery. Take the left side of that branch and this is going to be a number dependent on how many conveyors you have. 
So 11 power is going to be for the furnaces, and then however many you add on after that is going to power your conveyors, which each require one power. So we'll connect that up to this branch, and you'll be able to turn all your furnaces on now. We're going to add some auto turrets eventually to this, so we're going to set up the same thing we did on the other side. Setting this to 64 on the left side of that first branch, connecting it to the switch, and then setting the left side of the second branch to 31. Two splitters, connect it up, and you're ready to go for six more auto turrets over here. And you'll notice we set that first branch to 12, which means we've only got enough to power one conveyor. So if you ever add more conveyors and you need to power it up, just remember that first electrical branch we put down, you'll increase it by one for each conveyor. Turn all of our furnaces on, they'll be running forever now. And we'll come down to our front door, those two boxes by our front door, and we're gonna connect them together. These are going to be our buffer boxes right here. We'll bring the output of those over to the input of this conveyor. Set this to your ores, sulfur, frags, and HQM. And then the second one you can set, but you don't really have to put anything on here because the only thing going in and out of these furnaces is going to be smelted ore. So I like to set it on here, but I mean, you don't really have to. And now you have an infinite smelter. Whenever you throw stuff in your depot box, it'll get sucked up and smelted and put down by your TC room. You can connect these depot boxes to your depot boxes inside of your base. Like I said, we were gonna do earlier, throw these adapters on here and we will be connecting them with three combiners. There's gonna be a combiner on each of these gatehouses where you connect the boxes to. And once you've got that done on both gatehouses, you'll put another combiner by your front door and pipe it up. And you'll need another conveyor to put inside of your base, which is going to suck everything out. We're gonna set no filter on here and put it to this combiner. So everything you throw in those depot boxes is gonna get sucked up by this conveyor and placed inside of these boxes here. So if you would like to have this sorted or go deeper into your base, you're gonna to want to put a splitter here instead, but you can just connect it like this if you wanted to, but we're going to create a sorting hub of splitters down inside of our base right now. So we're not putting a conveyor on the other side of that splitter because we are going to put a hub for more things inside of our core. And remember, we got to put another power on this uh, electrical branch since we've added another conveyor down here. No filter on this conveyor. And then we'll go down inside of our core and create a splitter hub for... You'll just need a splitter for however many different types of things you're going to sort down here. Also depends on how much power you have. We'll connect that up to this splitter out here. Turn this conveyor on. And then you'll need to put storage adapters on anything that you want to be pulling items from your drop boxes and a conveyor between every box. So let's say this conveyor is going to be connecting to one of our resource containers. You would set it to have your low grade, your cloth, your wolf skulls, your bones, your crude oil, whatever you wanted to put on here. And this is all of our resources that are gonna get sucked up from our drop boxes for things like components or gear sets or guns. You can do things like this where you put two conveyors down with a splitter and combiner on each side, connect it all up, and now you can have two conveyors calling multiple items to the same box. Because as you know, you can only put two rows plus two items on each of these conveyors. Like right here, I show you, this is like the maximum amount you can have per conveyor. But if you want, if you have like your components box, you got more than what fits on a conveyor. So you would just connect that splitter up to the splitter hub and then connect the combiner to your components box and boom, now you got all your components going into one box. And I'll show you here, this is what the reason I put these boxes like this is because you can really reach with this pipe tool and you can just get better angles on here for piping all your items down here, you know what I mean? So that's this is one of the reasons why I put my TC room like this. 
So this right here is where all of your bullshit is going to end up. All the things that aren't sorted because it's going to get it's going to suck everything out of these depot boxes. When you're coming into your base, you're going to run in here. You're going to close the door behind you. Boom. You can just drop off everything. And this is on two sides of your base as well. So you got multiple directions. You can come in to sort all your items very quickly. All your bullshit's going to get stuck in that box and everything you have set to filters is going to get pulled down into your core. Ores are going to get smelted automatically and pulled down into your core. You've got this box next to your electrical room where you're going to have a hammer and some metal frags. Don't forget about that. You're going to want to have this here for whenever you need to take your windows off to authorize people on your turrets for whatever reason or to turn them off to refill the ammo you can close these doors up you don't really ever need to open them up besides for your electrical room access don't forget over here if you need more power you can throw another wind turbine up and um for the where you're gonna put the large battery at i'm gonna i'm gonna leave that up to you because this is outside of your base and it's dangerous and finally these garages or flank bases whatever you want to put outside you just build out until you can put a bed down which is not that far considering we've already got external tcs out here and boom now you've got a second respawn point here you can do this on the other side once you get enough materials it's good to at least get one of these down and build walls directly to your external tc if you prepare ahead you could even put a door on the other side of there so that you can just go straight through your external tc instead of having to go around it but um, I mean, I don't really ever think I'm ever going to get to this point. So I usually just end up putting external walls down like this and I'm protected by that auto turret on the external for when I'm running back in. This is great for if you die and you spawn in on that side of the base, you're good to go. You know what I mean? If you're getting online raided, if you ever get to this point where you get two SAM sites down, I mean, good for you. You're a solo god, man. This is where I would throw those at and use those external TC wind turbines to power them. And like I said, you can design those flank bases however you want. You could put garages there for cars. You could land your minis over there and shove them inside. And that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this base design. I've been using it for about a year now and it's great. I've gotten online raided in it a couple times and successfully defended it every single time. And if you've made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.